Welcome to Coastal Forage with Craig Evans. Uh, we're here today on an estuary uh, in Pembrokeshire and that noise you can hear in the background is a flock of swans just taken off. Hear them? There we are. So uh, yeah, so we're here to gather some Pacific oysters for a course, a foraging course we've got tomorrow. Um, when I go tomorrow there aren't any oysters because the habitat isn't, uh, isn't sufficient for them to grow. So um, we're going to get some oysters and the idea is to cook them along with whatever else we find, probably cockles, mussels, etc. And uh, hope you enjoy. Down on the estuary now in, uh, in deepest Pembrokeshire, uh, looking for some oysters. And in this case, we've come across a couple on the floor. And here's one here, look. And it's uh, a Pacific rock oyster. Uh, which is uh, prevalent all around the UK coast now and you can see it's uh, covered itself with or grown around some of the mud and the uh, and the stones so we'll, we'll harvest that one if you come across to this one this is one which is actually growing on uh, one of the rocks uh, we'll harvest that as well I'll just kick it off now what's happened is uh, well, when it was a young spat, about that big, which went across uh, in, in the tidal stream, it settled on a hard sub substrate, which is that stone, and it's lived there all its life. So what it's done, it's been filtering the uh, water, and uh, obviously there's good good water here with plenty of uh, plankton and algae for it to feed on. So it's a good little size, not too big, and you can see the edible, little edible periwinkles on the top. So to harvest these, off the rock, you can just give it a, a sharp kick. There you go, and there it is. So that's where it's been growing, and uh, we put it in the bag. What you got, boy? What you got? Yeah, what this is? Clever just found his own oyster. And I've been foraging, and he won't give it back. Look, give it here, boy. What's it? There we are. Nice little size oyster there. And the cows being foraging. Here you are, boy. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice, nice big oyster now, uh, attached to a, to a rock. And there's quite a bit of life on this one. It's its own ecosystem, really. It's quite old. You can count count the ripples on there. Uh, I'd say about I don't know, 10, 15 years old, something like that. Counting all these. Uh, but on the end of it, you can see it's got mud, little worms and things. Um, what What's attached to all this, apart from the, the edible periwinkles and things, is it's uh, there are mussels attached to it by the byssus thread. So it's, apart from being uh, uh, an oyster, it's uh, quite a few things going on there with, with the barnacles. There's, uh, Few muscles on it, so what we'll do in this case, uh, we'll, we'll put it back to breed. Right, so we've been for a walk along the estuary now, seeing what we can find, and uh, come across some lovely oysters. And these oysters are. Uh, they're actually invasive now, they're Pacific rock oysters, they're uh, known as the Giga species, native to uh, the Pacific of uh, North America. They grow much faster than the, and bigger than our native ones. Um, these are, are here because there were a number of uh, oyster farms locally. Um, it closed down about 40 years ago, but these are the progeny where they've been uh, where they've actually bred. They didn't think these type of oysters would breed in 
in the UK because the water was deemed to be too cold, but not the case. Now these oysters are around most coast of southern Britain in suitable habitats. Delicious to eat, and sometimes we get pearls in them. And uh, just to show you the difference, also found a couple of native flat oysters. Totally different species, feed the same way by uh, filtering out uh, plankton and algae from the water column. Uh, that's the that's a very young one there, and this is um, one which is just about legal size. But I tend not to take these. I, I, I put them back into the uh, back in the environment to breed. Uh, where we are now in Pembrokeshire, uh, apparently there's a um, a commercial fishery for for uh, oysters, and they gather about ten tons a year, something like that. Not too much. It's a it's a big estuary. So what I'll do with these, I'll, I'll throw them back into the water to uh, to, to breed. Put one in there. Uh, when they do breed, uh, both oysters they um, form tiny oysters inside themselves, and they spit them out then by the hundreds, and they call spat. And what the spat does, it uh, flows along in in the tide and the currents. And when it settles on a suitable substrate, it could be a, a small shell, a rock. In this case, this one has actually settled probably, count the rings, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six years ago on that little stone there. So what's happened is it's grown on that stone and as it's got bigger, the wave action and the current has formed a bit of a, a bit of a sail and it's been washed up onto the, uh, onto the shore here. And, uh, Looking at this now, uh, the rock has got again a few barnacles on it, and in this case, it's got uh, an edible seaweed called Condrus crispus or Irish moss on it. So, what we'll do, we'll uh, throw that up, throw it back in to uh, get on with his life. Yeah, and we'll take these uh, uh, home to eat with us. Right, let's come across this, uh, this common show crab here now. It's a nice big one. It's a it's a male with a triangle, but uh, because of the weight of it, what it is, it's not actually a live or a dead crab. It is old claws. So what it is, this is um, the shell which it got rid of in order to grow to its next stage. So this is all. It just bits of shell. So it's not not dead in any way. It's just it's uh, claws which it um, it's got rid of. So. Uh, crustaceans uh, what they need to do because they don't have skeletons they have exoskeletons which is what this is and in order to grow they need to split and crawl out of the old uh, shell and grow a new one so this crab now is under the water there somewhere uh, it's probably uh, very soft and uh, soft and uh, squidgy and it's hiding somewhere uh, waiting for its new shell to harden so there we are the back thing is we're going to cook these oysters and we're going to boil them for about eight to ten minutes and uh, when you do that we just put them into a, a saucepan um, what will happen is all the sediment and mud and silt will go into the water and go in and, and ruin, the, ruin the flesh so what I do is if you look on the bottom end there now that's that's the original stone which it was uh, settled on so we just give them a a good, good scrubbing to remove all this. What I'll say, if you're going to be handling oysters, be very, very careful because these edges they will cut you, and they are sometimes sharper than some knives. So you'll be very careful when you're, when you're handling these. Right, just about to go down to the beach now uh, after gathering the uh, oysters yesterday on the estuary. Yes, uh, oysters don't, uh, don't uh, live on, on, on this part of the shore. So we're hoping to gather some cockles, mussels, soft shell clams. The idea being hopefully that they're going to make some uh, kebabs. And again, with the kebabs, I'm going to hopefully make a sauce if I can find some uh, with um, pepper dull seaweed. And I brought with me my homemade. Um, uh, a rose hip syrup 
So I'm going to make a garlic and a rosehip syrup and pepper the sauce to go over it. So once we put them on the, well the plan is to put them on um, uh, kebabs and then toast them over, over the fire. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Right, we're digging down here now for the chopped uh, clams uh, to go along with the oysters, uh, cockles and uh, mussels we're going to get. Mm -hmm. So about 10 inches of a foot underneath. And there's cloudy in my hand. <laughs> there you are, look. Mm -hmm. That's what they are, and that's what you're going to be cooking uh, later on. There they are, lovely. That's okay. That's okay. in some of the, uh, the pepper dolls and we'll chop this up and uh, uh, use it as a coating along with homemade um, roasted syrup and then uh, you'll see in a bit what we're going to do. Put in now some of the wild roasted syrup. And, uh, give it all a stir. Right, we've uh, come to the stream now. What we're doing is uh, cleaning and preparing uh, the shellfish before uh, steaming them. With the soft shell clams. All you do is just get uh, just wash the sand off. Uh, the mussels. In this case, we just take off uh, the beard. And we're going to use some of the bigger cockles. Just give them a, a swill again to get the sand off. Put them in there. And as you see, we've got uh, plenty here. Uh, obviously, leaving plenty behind as well, so it's a tiny proportion of what's, what's out there. And, uh, that's something interesting as well. We've got this particular cockle now, which we've gathered a couple of seconds ago. It's actually got a, a sand anemone on it. It uses the um, the cockle has an anchor point, sits below the sand, and when the tide comes in, the anemone will come out and feed on the water column. So, uh, interesting. I'm picking the bigger cockles out of this because we're going to thread them onto a kebab in a, in a short while. So, these are the uh, scarlet elf cup or elf cup mushrooms which I picked last night uh, in, in an ash woodland uh, near home. Uh, they are edible and they're quite photogenic, striking scarlet colour. We're going to use these in our kebabs. What I'm doing now is just uh, emptying the, the seafood out, ready for uh, making into kebab. So we're just taking off uh, some of the mussels, some of the cockles. And what we're going to do is start off making a kebab. I think we'll start off with, uh, with the mussel. 
Mende. Yada işte. Yeah. A bit of uh, safe another soft shell clam. Elf cup mushroom. Go up there. A mushroom on there. We have soft shell clam siphon on there. And a bit of cockle on the end. And uh, another one of the mushrooms. Okay. So the, uh, the muscle on the end has fallen off yet again, however, we'll try another one. That's fine there, on there. The idea is to give it a, a coating with uh, the sweet rosehip, white rosehip syrup, uh, some of the uh, chopped up uh, fine garlic leaves and uh, if you look in there, some of the, uh, the pepperdell seaweed. So, just try that. Too, and just getting the flavour of the very nice. Like I said, I've only, I've only managed to uh, that's good with the wild garlic. Yeah. Yeah, so what I'm doing now is just uh, putting some more of the, the sauce on, which is the, the pepper dill seaweed and the rosehip syrup and uh, the spring onion flavoured uh, wild garlic. So these are obviously all cooked, apart from the, from the scarlet elf cups mushrooms. So here's the, the finished article now, this is the, the, the recooked kebab and with the mussel, the I tell you. Mm. Lovely and sweet. You can taste the garlic and uh, the bits of nice pepper dolls in it. There's some uh, soft shell clam now. Lovely texture to these. Mm. It's a bit like like squid, but but sweeter. Hmm. Try again the cockle. Hmm. That's all. Also eating the scarlet elf cup, which is a bit of quite a nice texture. No flavour, but. Uh, and uh, lastly, we'll try the bit of the oyster. Hmm. Very nice. Taste so myself. It's got the sweetness of the rose hip syrup, flavours of the garlic, the spring onion flavour of the, the wild garlic leaves, and uh, very nice. Thank you for watching. We've had a, a great time today. Uh, yesterday we gathered some oysters on uh, on the estuary, uh, but we won't get them in, in this uh, environment. Uh, we've collected some uh, soft shell clams, some mussels, some cockles, 
Uh, we've, and also we've got some um, scarlet earth cut mushrooms along with some white garlic. We've made uh, some nice kebabs uh, threaded on, on skewers. And uh, what we did, we uh, made a sauce of my uh, homemade roasted syrup uh, with some chopped up uh, wild garlic and some of the capital seaweed. So we covered the kebabs with the, uh, with the sauce and then grilled them. And uh, I say so myself, it was delicious. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you want to follow me on YouTube, please like and subscribe. It's uh, Coastal Foraging with Craig Evans. Uh, my Instagram account is Coastal Foraging with Craig. And if you can follow me on Facebook, uh, that again is Coastal Foraging with Craig Evans. So if you'd like to book a course, uh, which is what we do in, uh, in the area, just have a look at my website, which is www.coastalforaging.co.uk. So uh, thank you for coming along, and I'll see you next time.